What's up, Nail Geeks? Today I am back again with Polish Pickup. The shop is opening right around the corner, as in next weekend. This month we have Magic and Alchemy for our theme, and it is totally the Polished Mage approved. We have some absolute beauties this month. Those of you who saw my video uploaded last night, I do apologize that I did not keep it uploaded as I did check the mail after the video was uploaded and I noticed that there was one more polish so I don't want to have to split this video up so I wanted to keep them all together. So here is the actual full length video. So let's get started. First up is Aurora. This is once more the Sith will rule the galaxy described as a deep blue multichrome magnetic. This is inspired by Star Wars, the Sith's use of dark magic to create illusions. Price will be 11 and the cap is at 100 bottles. So this one has a really, really interesting magnetic feel to me. It does have a very nice formula. It builds up to opacity at two coats, which you'll see here in just a moment. Um, magnetized, you will see a background of an inky kind of smoky black base and there's lots and lots of blue little tiny micro flakes going on here. There is a bit of a scattered sparkle as well and the magnetic pigment gives off a lovely medium blue kind of glow overall and I do want to know on angles you'll see it shift over to purple. So I did try to catch it in my macro shots, unfortunately it was being a little bit shy for me. So just note there is a purple shift to this. Now here on that second coat, you can really see lovely opacity bu building up here. It just really, really pops with all of those little scattered sparkles all the way through. Of course, don't be like me and drop your magnet. I guess I was a little bit excited for this theme. Um, so here on the full hand shot, you are seeing a glossy top coat applied and I had no texture or anything like that. I would recommend a glossy top coat just to really make everything pop on this one. And Baroness X is back again this month with another acetone antidote in the scent Violet Magic. This is a dupe of Lush's Curbside Violet, which is a floral woody scent with Lang Lang, Rosewood, Jasmine, and a powdery touch and finishes off with a tart violet. This does not have a cap and will be 425. Overall, this one smells really magical to me. It's It's got a very woodsy scent, but just a touch of floral to it and an overall undertone of a powdery-like scent. It's super pleasant, very relaxing overall, and it's just really earthy to me. Just a really nice balance of woodsy and floral. So per usual, I like to put an entire bottle into my Zoya pump bottle, and I'm good to go with smooth cuticles and the power of full acetone. I also blog with it, and I add three drops to a Dappen dish, and I'm cleaning up as I go when I'm on swatchathons. And Baroness X also brings us smoke and mirrors. This is a black to colorless thermal polish. It glows green in the dark shifts from green to purple and has a scattering of various silver glitters. This is inspired by magicians and their smoke and mirror tricks. Price is 11 and there is a cap of 75 bottles to this. So overall, this has a medium formula to me. It builds up crazy fast to opacity. Now it does dry down very matte due to the glow in the dark pigment on it. So I would recommend a very glossy top coat just to really get everything to pop. So here on that first coat, you can see a really nice foundations laid down. Per usual, I give my bottles a good shake before applying, and as you can see here, no issues whatsoever getting glitters on my nail from the bottle. Now, the shimmer here is a very ethereal, like greenish kind of glow, very luminescent. On angles, you'll see it shift over to purple, which I believe I did catch in my macro shots. Now, I wanna know also that the, the thermal transition properties of this are very, very reactive. As you can see here on between my first and second coat, really, really nice transition going on here. Very nice. Now the warm state does take on a creamy white appearance overall. So I do think you could layer this over an undie if you'd want to, though personally, I think it's just fine on its own. And here on the full hand shot, you can kind of see that there is a lovely ombre effect going on here. And I am wearing a glossy top coat just to smooth everything out and no texture to report. Now I am in the south, so here I'm showing you guys with some ice water. So really, really nice glowy effect overall. I think this one's gonna be fantastic for Halloween in general. 
And blush lacquers brings us under pressure. This is described as a burnt sienna base loaded with gold flake, rose gold micro flakes, and a touch of hollow flake. This is inspired by Harry Houdini's famous water underwater torture trick. The price will be 11 and there is no cap on it. So overall, the base color here is definitely a burnt sienna, a really, really nice kind of chocolatey bronzish shade. Now here on the first coat, you can see really, really nice application overall. That brush just helps spread everything very even across the nail. Um, for this one, I'm going to suggest two coats for opacity. You'll see a really nice pond effect with all those flakes here. And overall, the gold flake and the rose gold flakes give a really nice metallic reflective touch overall. So um, kind of reminds me of a bit of a jewel kind of thing going on here. It's very twinkly, very, very sparkly overall. Now, I want to note that this one is comprised of flakes as opposed to glitters for the sparks that you're going to see here in just a moment on the full hand shot. Um, no issues whatsoever picking them up out of the bottle and applying flat on my nail. And per usual on the full hand shot here, you are seeing a glossy top coat applied. And as you can see, there's that lovely metallic reflective sparkle overall as well. By Danny Viana brings us Basilisk Scales. This is described as a peridot green hollow base with green and gold multi-chrome flakies and metallic gold flakies. This is inspired by potion ingredients and the price will be $11.50 and there is a cap of 110 bottles. So overall, this is a very flattering green, definitely on the peridot side. Um, I do feel like the flakes in this one will give you a blue to green shift overall. Um, I feel like on my macro shots, you could kind of see it, but I just want to know in person, those flakes definitely give off a blue appearance at some angles. So overall, we have a lovely jelly base. Now this brand, as much as I have been swatching for her, for her polished pickup shades the last few months, I do want to note her jelly bases are absolutely stellar. So as you can see here, they always apply real dense, real creamy, very glossy on the nail. So I think any top coat will be just fine. And you can see really, really lovely opacity on that second coat. There's lots of depth to this one and those flakes will give you a pond effect overall. Lots and lots of sparkles from those gold flecks. Very nice. No issues getting those flakes out of the bottle and onto my nail. And per usual on the full hand shot, you are seeing a glossy top coat applied. No texture whatsoever to report on this one. Just really flattering. Very, very lovely and true to its inspiration. And Cameo Colors Lacquers brings us Elixir of Immortality. This is described as a light purple base full of violet to purple to indigo to blue shimmers, hollow sparkle, hollow micro flakes, and platinum silver flakes. This is inspired by a picture of a magical elixir bottle. Price will be $11.50 and there is a cap of 100 bottles on it. So here we've got a lovely purple on purple glowy action going on here. At base color, I do feel like my video is being color accurate to what I'm seeing in person. This is a lovely medium kind of lilac sort of shade. I do want to note that the shimmer in this one is mostly violet in bright lighting, but on extreme angles, you'll see it shift over to a really lovely luminescent blue. This one does dry down just kind of on the matte side. So personally, I would recommend a glossy top coat to really make it pop. And those silver micro flakes, those little platinum flakes are very lovely. Those will give you a very tiny, but very strong reflective sparkle overall that you'll see here in just a moment on the full hand shot. Lots of dense scattered sparkle across this one as well. And as you can see here, just really nice opacity. Two coats is all I think you'll need on this one and you'll be good to go. No texture to report on this one either. Just lovely purple goodness. And Crystal Knockout brings us Mistress of No Mercy. This is as a pale lavender to periwinkle blue to violet trithermal with a strong copper aurora shimmer, bronze micro flakies, blue iridescent shimmer, and multi-chrome flakes in pink, green, and gold. Once I get the price and the cap information, I will update the description below for you guys um, once I have it in hand. So overall, we have a lovely kind of crelly-like feel for the formula overall. Once again, this one does dry down quite a bit on the matte side, so I would recommend a glossy top coat just to really make it pop. There is a subtle scattered sparkle across the nail overall and lots of small multi-chrome flakes that you'll see just light, lightly scattered across your nail bed as well. So here we've got a very sensitive thermal once again, really easy to transition over as you can see between my first and second coat. Very, very nice application overall. 
and the temperature sensitivity is very, very strong here as well. For full opacity, I'm gonna suggest two coats on this one and you'll be good to go. As you can see here, there is a bit of a blue in between transition state and the thermal properties. However, I was very warm while I was watching this. So um, I think you can kind of see it on the ice water shot here. Um, but please note for my own swatches, the main dominant colors I was seeing was that nudie type of beige to that lovely violet color. And Indie by Patty Lopez brings us Mysterious Magic Bottle. This is described as a pale gray base with multi-chrome shimmer, multi-chrome flakies, and scattered micro hollow glitters. This is inspired by the show I Dream of Genie. Price will be 12 and there is a cap of 84 bottles on it. So overall, this one has a very jelly feel on application. I do feel like for full opacity to really make it pop, I would suggest going up to three coats on it. Though I do feel like on that first coat here, you can kind of see you might be able to get away with using this as a topper over a dark color. Once you build it up, that multi-chrome shimmer is very, very strong. In person, it mostly appears as a strong violet shade with pink and bronze on extreme angles. There's lots and lots of dense scattered hollow glitters here as well. Um, and as well as smaller multi-chrome micro flakes as well. So once again, per usual, my bottles get a good shake before I swatch them, and I had no problems picking up any of the sparkles or those flakes to get on my nail. So here on that third coat, you can really see there's lovely opacity starting to come out. The base color overall, I would describe as a pale gray. It does have a silvery type sheen from it, though I'm quite certain that that's from the multi-chrome shimmer. It does have a metallic feel overall. And after going in normally with my top coat, I had no texture either on this one as well. So really interesting shifty multi-chrome overall. Um, got that pale base and that really strong shimmer. So very, very nice and no texture after top coating. And Lemming Lacquer brings us Emertentia. This is described as a polish featuring red to green color shifting shimmer, scattered hollow micro flakes, a blend of iridescent flakes shifting the entire rainbow, particularly gold, orange, red, and purple, blue to pink, and a bright fuchsia jelly base. This one will be 13 and the cap is 250 bottles. So this is definitely a fuchsia jelly type of polish overall. I do feel like there's a strong magenta lean to it as well. Now the formula overall is quite heavy, and I mean that in a good way, as it applies very dense on the nail. No issues picking up the flakes from the bottle, and the Aurora shimmer here is very strong. So mostly you'll see like a reddish inner glow overall with that green shift coming out on extreme angles. Now here on that second coat, you can really see it just packs a punch for opacity. I would suggest thinner coats on this one as it is lovely and dense overall. And the flakes will give you a really nice glow as well. Those are of the medium size, so really, really nice. And it just kind of really adds something extra to it. Now on this one, I would suggest a glossy top coat overall to really get it to pop. And as you can see here in a, just a moment on the full hand shot, very, very nice, very flattering overall as the base does have a cool undertone to it, though the shimmer and the flakes really warm up the overall tone. Now, Lemming Lacquer also brings us a lotion this month in the scent Emertentia to match her polish. Now, I wanted to show you guys here, this is how it comes. It is taped across the cap so that you can reduce um, any type of spilling or leakage during shipping. This is described as a fresh blend of citrus, peaches, and rose with a sweet, musky base. This will be seven and it has a cap of 50 bottles. So overall, the smell of it reminds me of a body spray that I used to wear and I can't put my finger on what it was, um, but it's very fruity and it does have a musky undertone to it. It's decently sweet overall. So if you're floral, if you love florals and you appreciate a little bit of a sweeter scent, this is definitely for you. The formula overall is very easy to spread across, across your skin. It soaks in very nicely. Overall, I was very, very pleased with the formula on this non-greasy and easy, easy, easy to spread across your skin. So very nice overall. And Moonflower Polish brings us Minor Mending. This is described as a gunmetal gray hollow stamping polish with gold micro flakies. This is dual purpose and you can wear it in one to two coats as a regular polish. And you can also use it for nail art techniques. This is inspired by the Magicians season four finale. 
price will be $12.50 and there is a cap of 80 bottles on it. So first off, I'm showing you guys it wearing it on its own. This has a very heavy formula as it is a stamping polish. However, it is smooth and buttery on those brush strokes. So I do typically, if I wear Nadia's polishes on their own, I will always wear them as one coat going in normally. And as you can see here, beautiful opacity. There's a strong holographic effect with this one and very tiny gold flecks across the nail. On the full hand shot here, you are seeing it topped off with a glossy top coat and just smooth sailing overall. Now also I'm showing you guys it used in some nail art. I did have a bit of a nail fail with it and I used a different stamper in my other look that I'm not showing you guys because it came out awful, but I had no issues picking it up with a different stamper other than a jelly, pol jelly clear stamper either. So here I'm showing you guys it over white as I thought that would pop up better in the video. Now when you stamp with it and after you top coat as stamped, then you'll see those hollow flecks come out to play across your nail. Um, very, very nice. It does dry down matte. So personally, I would recommend a glossy top coat with it and really, really nice stamping polish in general. If you're new to stamping, I would highly recommend checking out Nadia's polishes as I've had no issues with them on any type of stamper I've used or plate overall. So here on that full hand shot, you can see that the holographic effect really pops over dark colors and you'll see more of that gunmetal base on light colors. And Night Owl Lacquer brings us Animus Touched. This is inspired by the Wings of Fire book series. Described as an ultramarine blue base with a rainbow of color shifting crystal chameleon flakes to represent different dragon scales and hollow micro flaggies. This one will be $12.50 with no cap. Now this one does have a bit of a jelly base overall. However, it builds up very quickly as you'll see here in just a moment. On that first coat, it does start off just a little bit on the sheer kind of jelly side, but just wait for it. On that second coat, it pops like crazy. I have been absolutely loving the color blue on my nails the last few months. Um, I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Um, this is absolutely lovely for a blue. I do feel like the video is being color accurate. I know sometimes my bottle shots can get just a little bit lighter than what I'm seeing in person, but I do feel like the video is color accurate, at least on my monitor. To what i'm seeing in front of me right here so really nice ultramarine blue very medium on the brightness scale overall i think it'll pop on any skin tone and there's lots and lots of rainbow colored flakies here as well so for opacity i'm going to suggest two coats on this one as well as a glossy top coat which is what you're seeing on the full hand shot here and no texture lots of sparkles and just a lovely rainbow effect from those flakes which behaved very nicely for me and no problems picking them up out of the bottle either. And Polish brings us Equivalent Exchange. This is described as a smoky graphite scattered holographic with an ultra bright multi-chrome finish that shifts from deep violet red to gold and green. This is inspired by the Full Metal Alchemist anime. The price is $12.50 and there will be no cap on it. So overall, this one has a lovely, buttery, smooth formula, really nice application overall. For opacity, I'm gonna suggest two coats. I can't really see anybody needing to go past that. It spreads across the nail very, very nice. Now, the official description does say that it's a scattered holographic. However, I wanna note that that is true. However, I feel like it's so loaded up with holographic effect that it is just really heavily flirting with being linear in my opinion the base color is definitely a smoky graphite on that first coat you can see there's a bit of a gray kind of base going on here now the multi-chrome pigment takes absolute center stage here it is so crazy strong in person in normal to bright lighting you'll see it like you see here it's a reddish coppery just lovely bright effect and on angles, you'll see it easily shift over to bronze, to gold, and even green. It's really, really intense. On the full hand shot, you are seeing a glossy top coat applied. And Pretty Beautiful Unlimited brings us Begin Thy Magic Spell. This is described as an olive jelly base with Aurora pigment, silver holographic micro glitters and flakies, and a mix of six different crystal chameleon and UCC flakes. This is inspired by Disney's The Evil Queen. The price will be $11.50 and there is a 165 bottle cap on it. So this is what I would consider a full coverage glitter. I do feel like there is a bit of versatility with this one. If you did want to wear it under 
um, over an undie, if you will, um, on that first coat here, I think you can kind of get that idea that you can probably layer. I think it would look really cool over an olive cream, but I'm always extra and I want to see how these polishes do and perform on their own. So you can see here, second coat, I'm getting much, much higher opacity going on here. I probably could have stopped at two coats, um, though I wanted to really make it pop and just give me that nice thickness I usually go for. Per usual, my bottles get a good shake before swatching, and I had no problems picking up any of those lovely pigments and from the bottle onto my nail. So here on that third coat, this is me being extra, and you can really see that it just really, really pops overall, just really crazy. So this one's really gonna depend on how you want to wear it, um, how you want it to look on your nail. I do feel like there's quite a bit of versatility with this. Now I wanna know also, this one does have a very shifty shimmer to it as well. In person, it comes off a bit as a purpley type of appearance um, amongst all of those sparkles and flakes. And on angles, you'll see it shift over to an orangey type of pink shade. So I went in normal with my top coat and I had no texture whatsoever. Really easy, very, very lovely loaded up polish. Now the brand also brings us a scented matte top coat in the scent Temptation, which is described as a tart, juicy, delicious aroma of crisp sugared apples with a hint of sour green apple candy. This one's also inspired by Disney's The Evil Queen. Price is seven, and this one also has a cap of 165 bottles. So I'm showing you guys it over Pretty Beautiful Unlimited's um, polish pickup color, which you just saw. The formula overall for this top coat is very ultra smooth, very, very buttery. It does give off a strong matte effect. So if you're looking for a good matte top coat, um, definitely recommend picking this one up. Now the scent lingering after it dries down is a very crisp apple smell to me. It's semi-sweet, um, really nice, like almost candy-like undertones to it, but the prominent scent is a strong crisp apple. And last but certainly not least is Scoflaw Nail Varnish. This is Mercury was in effing retrograde. Described as a deep purple jelly base with shifting blue purple shimmer and glitters of aquamarine, copper, and black. This will be $12.50 and there is no cap on it. I do want to note that this one on the label underneath the bottle will have asterisks for um, a specific word. So just throwing it out there, um, those of you who are curious about the label, it, it does have a bit of censoring on it. So just throwing that out there. Now, overall, this one has a very heavy formula. It really spreads across the nail nicely. No issues whatsoever picking up any of those lovely glitters onto my nail. For opacity, I'm gonna suggest two coats. I really can't see anyone needing to go to three on it as it is perfectly delightfully rich overall. It does dry down quite a bit on the matte side, so I would recommend a glossy top coat just to really get it to pop. And I also wanna note that this one does have lots and lots of shimmer that gives it a bit of a purpley glow in person. I feel like in my swatches, it was being a little bit shy, so I just wanna throw it out there. There's a lot going on here. So your eye mostly will travel to those glitters, but I do wanna note that there's a lovely shimmer in person as well. That shimmer will give you that nice violet glow on extreme angles as well. So tons and tons to see here. On the full hand shot, you can see it topped off with my favorite top coat and no issues to report here. Very complex Crelly in my opinion, very nice, easy to use, very, very opaque on application. So Polish Pickup will open September 6th at 11 a.m. Eastern time and it will run until September 9th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Wish listing should be opening, I believe, this coming Monday, and you guys should be able to make your wish list. I know this month is going to be absolutely crazy. There's some magical things that have been made. And please note that a lot of these polishes, at least the ones that I have reviewed, have quite a bit of a cap on each one. So definitely want to take advantage of that wish list option. Also, I wanted to throw it out there this weekend. I'm kind of playing around with showing the text and the names of polishes on the screen. So please let me know how that is coming across on your screens, whether you watch this on your phone or your computer or TV, what have you. Um, I definitely wanna see some feedback for that. Pretty, pretty please um, if I need to switch things up and continue. Overall, this is a big learning process for me and I'm trying to figure out what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. 
I'll also link you guys below to Polish Pickup's so site as well as my blog post for additional written review and swatch pictures. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.